Okay, students, fellow students, we're going to discuss hypopituitarism. Hypopituitarism. Just like it sounds, what we're talking about here is the inability of the pituitary gland to secrete adequate enough hormones to meet the body's needs. Inadequate secretion of the pitu anterior pituitary hormones. There we go, hypopituitarism. Okay, now if hypopituitarism should occur in a child, we call it dwarfism. We call it dwarfism. And some of the characteristics of a person who has dwarfism, well, they would only meet about, they would be 40% less than normal height. 40% less than normal height. The good news is it will be pro proportional growth, except it's 40% less than normal height. In fact, if they were to um, reach um, in adulthood, they would be perhaps no more than 36 inches or 3 feet. What are some of the causes of dwarfism? Well, there's many. Um, no response by cells to the growth hormone. Okay, the pituitary gland may secrete more than adequate enough um, amounts of growth hormone, but remember that a hormone, in order to work, has to reach its target tissue not only does it have to reach its target tissue, but the receptors on the target tissue, on the cells, have to be functioning properly. Um, if you had a cup and you poured water into it and there was a bunch of holes, what would happen to the water? Everything would go out. Basically, you have a, a non-functional cup. Well, in this case, uh, if the receptors do not respond to the hormone, it doesn't matter if you have enough hormone. So the, um, the receptor sites must respond properly. And sometimes, in dwarfism, that is not the case. Other issues, hemorrhage in the area of the pituitary gland, trauma, infection, or even an autoimmune disorder or hereditary may be the cause of dwarfism. Um, some of the other issues involved with dwarfism, delayed or absent sexual function, and um, accelerated aging. Lifespan uh, will be less than 20 years that of normal. All right, now, what if you're an adult and you end up with hypopituitarism? Well, in an adult, we change the name. We don't say dwarfism. We use a term called panohypopituitarism. Pan means everything. When you say, for instance, I'm going to take a panoramic picture, taking a picture of almost everything you possibly can. Or if you say there's total chaos in an area, what do you call it? Pandemonium. Or if there's a bad infection in a certain community, we might call it what? Pandemic. Now, in panhypopituitarism, we like to say that all the anterior pituitary hormones are not being secreted. Not quite. There might be some cases where some are still being secreted. You just kind of have to sort that one out. All right, let's go here. We have Sheehan syndrome can cause panhypopituitarism, and that's an unfortunate event after pregnancy if a woman should go into shock. It may cause a lack of perfusion to the brain and or lack of perfusion to the pituitary gland and, and, and infarcts and, and basically dies off. You could have tumors, tumors inside the pituitary gland or tumors outside of the pituitary gland nearby that are putting its pressure upon it, uh, destroying its ability to function. Um, what if you had, let's say, hyperpituitarism, you had surgical removal of the pituitary or you had radiation therapy, that can cause panhypopituitarism or even some sort of trauma. Now, the technical one is depression by over-secretion of other endocrine glands. We know, for example, if you were to give a patient exogenous um, steroid therapy, let's say prednisone, that you have to taper them off when you take them off that medication. Why? Because the pituitary gland has ceased to stimulate the adrenal gland, and if you, in other words, you made the pituitary gland, at least in that area, non-functional. It can come back, of course, but um, it, its ability to produce the tropic hormone is suppressed, and so that's what they mean with suppression by over-secretion of other endocrine glands. One important aspect of panhypopituitarism is another syndrome, and this is the worst of the worst, the bad, and that's uh, Simmons cachexia. Get used to that word cachexia. Basically, that means wasting away. Uh, usually, it, it kind of indicates lean tissue, which means muscle tissue. And let's say your patient was dying of cancer. 
they end up cachetic. What do we mean by cachetic? They came emaciated, exceedingly thin. That's cachexia. All right, now in Simmons cachexia, it's a lack of growth hormones, th uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, melan melanocyte stimulating hormone, your lack of gonadotropin hormones, LH, FSH. Okay, now you have a pretty dismal type presentation of a patient. Without growth hormone, organ size and function is not proper. Without thyroid stimulating hormone, um, the thyroid gland will not secrete its hormone. The patient will be hypothyroid. They have, uh, their basal metabolic rate will change, but basically means the cells will work slow. ACTH, um, they, without ACTH, the patient will not um, produce glucocorticoids. Now, glucocorticoids, hydrocortisone, that's absolutely critical in the body because in the event of a stressful physical or even emotional, you need to have gobs of sugar. And glucocorticoids, as an example, helps keep the blood sugar levels up. If you don't have enough glucocorticoids and you face a crisis, surgery, auto accident, illness, that sort of thing, you may not survive the crisis because you don't have enough glucocorticoids. You will not survive the stressful event. All right, MSH, um, that has to do with pigmentation. So what will the patient look like without pigmentation? So they'll be pale, pallor. Um, gonadotropins. Now, gonadotropins, follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, LH, luteinizing hormone. These hormones really, you might think, do two things. One, they help the human species reproduce, okay? Reproduction. Without it, there's no reproduction. Secondly, FSH, LH, they aid and help us in, in the male developing adequate number of testosterone to have secondary sex characteristics for the female adequate amounts of what? Estrogen to have secondary sex characteristics. Without that, we'll have sexual dysfunction, uh, decreased libido, sex drive, and for the female, amenorrhea. One overall concern. One overall concern, friends, is this. Um, signs and symptoms will be depending, keep in mind, in panel hypopituitarism, on what hormone is lacking. If it's growth hormone and it's a child, basically they'll be dwarfs until treated. Now, um, also keep in mind that if it's a tumor causing the, the uh, disease, they may have visual disturbance and may even have seizures. All right, now let's go with diagnosis. We'll do this kind of quickly. With dwarfism, maybe a growth chart will let us know that they're 40% less than normal height. CAT scan, MRI, imaging studies, uh, they will give us some clues. X-rays. Uh, radio immunoassays, which basically means blood tests to detect accurately and specifically hormone levels. Cerebral angiography, excuse me here. Cerebral angiography, that has to do with um, vascular abnormalities around the area of the pituitary gland that may cause a problem. Let's go with um, the nursing goal here. This is big. The nurse's job is, number one is patient education. Now, these patients need to know the side effects they need to be almost become endocrine specialists, the patients do. So part of our role is to teach them. And they're going to be taking medications that are basically hormones. And so what the patient's going to have to know is if the effects when the hormone that they take is too much or too little. So a lot of education involved. And the patient will be on exogenous hormone replacement therapy for life. Okay, and if it's growth hormone, the child will be taking growth hormone till they reach five feet. In the adult, in the adult, they'll take growth hormone. Um, we'll give them a sense of well-being, lean body growth, energy level. And I, I like this because that means quality of life. Obviously, if there's some problems with the thyroid, they'll have to take Synthroid or Cytomel, uh, LH. Um, they'll either have to have testosterone or estrogen replacement, LH, FSH, if they want to reproduce sexually, and ACTH. Um, that's, they won't give them the ACTH, but they'll give them glucocorticoids um, to replace that. Pretty involved. We'll get more of this and learn more of this later. Again, hypopituitarism, um, lack of the pituitary hormones that are needed to sustain life. If we have hypopituitarism and a lack of growth hormone in a child, what do we call it? You're right, dwarfism. What will be the treatment? exogenous hormones, growth hormone until they reach about five feet. Um, adult onset, what's the magic word? pan hypopituitarism. And one offshoot of that, the uh, real serious syndrome of what? Simmons cachexia when they're lacking 
all of the anterior um, hormones. There you got it.